The man in a white suit. And no, I'm not talking about the Stig. It's an old British film from the 1950s about a young man who invents an incredibly strong textile that never wears out. It doesn't even get dirty. He makes a white suit out of it and is declared a hero. That is, until the mill owners realise exactly what his invention will do to their industry. So why am I talking about this old film now? Well, I'm beginning to wonder if marketing executives at Sony have watched this movie. Maybe they rented it out for their last Christmas party. I know what you're going to say. We're nowhere near reaching the perfect camera that never wears out. But would you believe me if I said it looks like Apple are starting to be affected by some of the same issues raised in this old film? Like a lot of people, I bought my last MacBook Pro when they launched the M1 Max chip at the end of 2021. And let's be honest, the launch of Apple's own silicon chips was so far ahead of the competition, they changed the whole computer industry. And I love mine. But looking at recent reports, it's clear that Apple Mac sales are falling. And I mean really falling, like a laptop off a cliff. Some people are quoting year-on-year -year sales drops of more than 40%. And that's huge. So why? If Apple are making the best computers you can buy, would sales be dropping by such a large amount? Well, some of it is because of the economic downturn, post-Covid, inflation, and the fact that none of us have any money left. But if they were the only reasons, then sales of all makes of computers would have dropped by a similar amount. And they haven't. Apple Mac sales are falling faster than anyone else's. Don't get me wrong. We shouldn't feel sorry for Apple. They're not short of cash and they still have the phone, watches, iPads and those increasingly important service subscriptions. Profits are still rising. But the Mac is strange. My old M1 Max is brilliant. It still feels as fast as the day it arrived and it easily copes with every task I throw at it. I can edit multiple layers of 8K video in DaVinci Resolve while editing a graphic on Photoshop and talking to my mum on FaceTime. I can't think of any reason why I need to update it. And that might be the problem. Nobody needs to update their fast Apple Silicon. It's almost like a white suit. So let's think about how Sony have recently been launching cameras. And I promise I won't call anything a game changer. The FX9. Shoulder mounted, a full frame sensor with variable ND, an A7S III, the perfect YouTube mirrorless with 10 bit recording and a 4K sensor that sees in the dark. The tiny FX6, a pro camera which is basically an A7S III with its 120p output in 4K RAW but at half the price of an FX9. The original Venice, a lovely cinematic 6K sensor and internal XOCN recording, good enough for any movie. An A1, top-of-the-range mirrorless with 8K. The Burano, a little Venice 2 with full-frame 8K, variable ND, internal stabilisation, XOCN and 16 stops of latitude. And recently, the A93 with its full-frame global shutter. Wow, listing Sony cameras. This is dynamite YouTube content. But there is a reason for that list. Each of those cameras contains one or more individual elements which, when put together, could result in Sony making what most of us would probably describe as the perfect camera. To use a quote from Morecambe and Wise, they're all the right notes, just not necessarily in the right order. I find it very difficult to believe that Sony are not capable of doing this. Maybe not immediately, but very, very shortly. There'll be a slight delay because you need a 12K sensor to downscale and output full colour resolution at 8K, just to make up for the Bayer filter. But as soon as Sony make one, full frame with a global shutter, everything else that could possibly go into my dream camera is already in production. It's just spread across different camera models. And I'm wondering if that's maybe intentional. Imagine that full frame 
12K global shutter sensor in an 8K camera with IBIS, variable ND, AI autofocus, recording in both XAVC and XOCN internally. And with that Venice color science and all in a lightweight box about the size of an FX6. Oh, and Sony, please don't forget a proper quality viewfinder this time. I don't believe we have to imagine this for very long. Most of it is technically possible now, but if Sony made it, would it be their white suit moment? Would you ever need to upgrade again? I've heard rumours that Sony are going to charge $150 for a firmware update on the A7 IV next spring. But how long will it be before we all have to subscribe to the software that runs on our perfect cameras? I hate the subscription model now used by so many companies and if I can, I'll use an alternative product. Apple made the perfect laptop and now sales are dropping really fast, but I bet Sony are watching very closely, which in a way could be a bit sad for us. So my question is, what will the perfect camera cost us? Thanks for watching. Oh, and while you were watching this video, more than 350 million WhatsApp messages have been sent. Presumably, most of them telling friends to subscribe to Extra Shot.